Black Magic. This is MP4 Books. The Black Magic Horror Story. One night, a young girl named Ali picked up the phone and called her best friend, Claudie. My parents are going out tonight, said Ali. Can you come around 10 o'clock? That's great, replied Claudie. I will bring the book with me. Bye. Ali put the phone down and went to her bedroom to prepare for the evening. The two girls were planning something very dangerous. Both of them had always been interested in black magic and the occult. Only a few days before, Cloudy had found something very interesting at the local rubbish dump. It was a large heavy book, bound in leather and filled with countless pages of archaic writing. It was not just any book. This book contained instructions on Satanism, devil worship, occult rituals and how to cast black magic spells. For Ali and Claudie, the idea of being able to cast spells was very attractive. They had been trying to try it for some time. When Claudie found the satanic book, the two girls decided to follow these instructions and attempt to summon the devil to do their bidding. Shortly after, Ali parents went out that night. Claudie arrived. It was a few minutes after 10 and the girls climbed the stairs and went to Ali's room. They were shaking with anticipation. Following the instructions in the book, they closed the windows and pulled the shades so that the room was in complete darkness. In the middle of her bedroom, Ali had set up a little wooden table. Around it, she placed lighted black candles. Claudie laid the open book on the table. The girls sat across from each other and joined hands. Staring into the book, they began to read in unison. In nomine de nostri, Satan's Lucifer, Excelsa. In the name of Saturn, ruler of the earth, the king of the world, who commands the forces of darkness, we beg you to put your infernal power in our hands, spread wide the gates of hell, and come forth from the abyss to greet us as a brother and a friend. A light breeze blew through the room and the girls exchanged worried look as they continued. Grant us the power that we seek. Grant us the pleasure that we seek. Indulge our every whim and make our dreams come true. We invoke your name and demand that you show yourself. We renounce God and worship only you. O Prince of Darkness, you who reward evil and punish goodness, hear our plea. The gust of wind grew stronger and shook the room. Even though the windows were all closed, Claudia was trembling. She tried to let go of her friend's hand, but Ali held her tight and continued chanting. By all the demons of hell, we demand that all of the things we mentioned shall come to pass. We speak your name. A cold wind began turning the pages of the book. Claudie broke away from Ali's grasp. Then, as if on cue, the wind ceased and the book abruptly snapped shut. Both girls screamed in fright. This is too much, Ali, cried Claudie. I am going home. I am afraid. I don't like this. I am scared too, Claudie, Alice replied. But isn't this what we wanted? What we planned? After all, it was working. If you didn't pull your hand away, we might have made contact. I don't want to do this anymore, Claudie cried. It was fun in theory, but I never believed any of it was real. I have got a bad feeling about this. I am going home. It's over. Bye, Ali. See you tomorrow. And what about the book? Alice demanded. You can keep it, replied Claudie. I don't want it anymore. Claudie grabbed her coat and made her way downstairs to the front door. 
Ali followed her, begging her to stay, but she refused. She did not have far to go, just down the street, past the pond and she would be home. Ali said goodbye and shut the front door. Then she went slowly back to her room, turned on the light and blew out all of the candles. She opened the curtains and placed the satanic book beside her bed. She lay down and looked at the clock. It was eleven. She closed her eyes and fell asleep. Claudie was hurrying towards her home. As she passed the pond, she felt something behind her and spun around. There was nobody there, but she felt as if she was being watched from afar. Scared, she screamed with horror. That night, Alice had a very disturbing dream. She saw Claudie lying in a ditch near the pond. Her head was resting at an odd angle, and there were bruises around her neck. Alice woke up in a panic and screamed out for her father. He rushed into her room and tried to comfort her. Relax, girl, he said in a soothing voice. It was just a bad dream. Go back to sleep. In the morning, you will have forgotten all about it. Please, Dad, she cried. Can I sleep with you and Mom tonight? I don't want to be here alone, please. Well, okay, come on then. Her father replied as he took the frightened Allie in his arms and hugged her tightly. She looked at the clock. It was almost 2 a.m. Just then, the phone rang. Alice picked it up and heard a faint voice on the other end. It was cloudy. Beware, Allie. Be very careful or what happened to me will happen to you as well. That was the only thing she heard before the line went dead. Cloudy, she screamed desperately. Cloudy, calm down, Ali, said her father. What happened? I don't know, Dad, she replied. I don't know, but I'm afraid. I am afraid for my life. Ali was overcome by fear and desperation and began to cry. Don't worry, said her father as he rubbed her shoulders. Go to sleep and tomorrow you will see. Everything will be okay. He took Ali to his bedroom and she lay down in the bed between her father and mother. Soon, she fell into a peaceful sleep. In the morning, her father was awoken by the terrified scream of his wife. Opening his eyes, he was horrified to see his daughter lying dead beside him. Ali's body was stiff and her throat was black and blue. She had been strangled. He began to scream and cry. Hours later, Claudie's lifeless body was discovered in a ditch near the pond. She had also been strangled. Police estimated her time of death as being around 11.15 p.m. the night before. The end of the story, Black Magic